Hey everybody, it's Elizabeth of ERW Plans on Instagram, ERW underscore plans, online, ERWplans.com, and on Etsy, ERWplans.etsy.com. Today, we are gonna be setting up my Passion Planner daily for the next three months, which is July through September of 2020. As always, when I'm setting up a new passion planner, the first thing I'm gonna do is add an extra bookmark. This one has a cream color to it, so I've got a few different color ribbons here, but I think I'm gonna go with the this kind of burgundy color one. So, add ribbons for next time. Um, I'll just go over how to add a ribbon real quickly. This is the green ribbon that it comes with. I'm going to assume about one inch or so here. Fold it down uh, about there. And then we're just gonna cut it to be about the same length as the green one. Once you've cut your ribbon, the next thing you're gonna do is glue it. This is the E6000 glue that I always use. So we just take a little bit of that, we add it to the length of the ribbon that we want to glue in. I do it on both sides just to make sure. Okay. Then I'm gonna go ahead and if you see, there's a little gap in the back here. And the ribbon is just gonna slide right down that gap in the back. We're gonna push it down. You can use a spatula tool. Uh, in the past, I've used um, tweezers, whatever you have handy. Just push it down in there until it's about the same length as your green one. And then you're just gonna press it Get the glue to stick. Okay. Then once you've done that, I actually will press this and hold this for a couple of minutes just to make sure that it sticks. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a flip out key to the front of the planner. Um, I have another video where I show you how to do the liner to be the uh, page flap liner, like if you're creating your own book. And that's basically the same technique we're gonna use for the flip out key today. So I've already cut my liner to fit inside the planner with enough room for my key to be completely outside the edge of the planner. So for example, if I close the planner, my key will be completely outside the edge of the planner, but when I fold it in half to close it, while it goes right up to the edge of the planner, it won't show out. Okay, so I've already measured and cut that out. Once again, we're gonna get our E6000 glue. And you can go as crazy as you want on this inside cover here. Just glue that in. The most important places to make sure you have the glue down are right here by the seam. Here. And right here by your edge. Okay. Because you want to make sure that's all really well reinforced. If you want to do a little bit in the center, you can. It's not super critical. Big thing, don't let it close. Okay. Make sure it's gonna fold out, however you have it. This is my design, so it folds out. And then I do it while it's still folded closed so I can make sure that it's fitting where I need it to fit. I will go ahead and just slide it right in. And then you're gonna just press that flat. 
if you don't have that glue, you can use a different kind of glue. The E6000 is best, in my opinion, because it has a um, really good hold. It's almost like an epoxy, which is why it works really well for the ribbon. Um, I have planners that are a couple years old now that I still have my ribbon in. So uh, it really, it's they've got a really good hold to it. Open this up and it holds pretty quickly. You can also washi tape this in if you want. Um, I would not recommend using Elmer's glue. If you have a book binding glue, that'll work fine. Okay. So as you can see, I went right up to that page fold there, but I make sure I don't get any glue on the page fold so my pages don't glue together. Also make sure you're using a fairly thick paper. Um, this is a handmade paper I got from my local paper store uh, back in January when things were still open. But you know, you can go online and find fairly, fairly thick paper. Um, it's a little bit thinner than construction paper, but it's got a really good texture to it and it'll fold and float, fold open and close really easily. If you're using a thinner paper, you can reinforce your fold with washi tape. Um, if you were doing that, I would move this in slightly, move it in about a centimeter, like a, a millimeter or two really, um, washi here, and then washi the inside to reinforce your fold. Next, I'm gonna take my key. This is a custom key that I did for myself, but you can find the basic key, the vertical key, which just has key and all the little check boxes on it in my store. What do I wanna do is I'm gonna close this to make sure that when it's closed, I can see it based on placement. And I'm just gonna place it basically right up against the pages. This paper's textured, so it might take a bit to get my paper to stick. Make sure you have a very even flat surface. Again, you can wash it in, you can add a little glue to it. Um, generally for something textured like this, I would recommend uh, writing on your key beforehand, but I'm just gonna push that in there. And then when I fold that in, the, the weight of the paper, the, itself will help it stay. Right, finally, I'll show you how I'm going to do my key. Uh, this key, as I said when I installed it, is a little bit different than the key that you would get from my shop because I did this as a custom. Um, I have a monthly task list which is also available on the bookmarks that I sent out last year with uh, my purchases. Um, anybody that made a purchase during uh, Black Friday or after Black Friday, uh, got a bookmark with all these tasks on them. We have the key where I'm gonna put my color codes and my um, marking codes so I know what marks mean what. But down here I've got my level 10 life goals. And what I'm gonna do is color code them and then I'm gonna pick the life goal from the ones I have in my uh, monthly planner or my weekly planner, I should say. Uh, here, that I did at the beginning of the year, I'm gonna pick one life goal from each of the categories and I'm going to put it down here. The colors generally coordinate to that. So, we'll get started. I'm going to do is go ahead and add in my front pages. This is the 2019 uh, release of the Passion Planner Daily. So the 2019 release had this whole eight page heart o story. The reason for that being um, if it had eight pages of text it would be cheaper for them to ship. So I've already gone ahead and covered it with all of my stickers and I'll go over what each of those are. Um, I'm leaving the first two pages here blank, or I should say open as they uh, would usually appear. Uh, this will be either like a vision board type situation or some other kind of collage or decoration page. 
Um, I have another video that's uh, in the works showing you how to make a vision board in your planner if you want to add one to your planner. This, um, like I said, I'm not really 100% if I'm gonna put a vision board in each of my quarters or if I just wanna use this to keep, you know, in a pre-COVID world, ticket stubs to events, uh, souvenirs from places I've traveled, etc. So I'm not really sure because we don't really know how, what's going on in the world right now, um, but I'm gonna leave that open for now. So the next two pages are my business goals for this quarter and my personal goals for this quarter. Uh, both of these are available in my shop. Um, they are separate from the annual goals and this is a new design specifically for quarterly goals. The uh, annual goals design should will still remain the same. Okay, um, and I will go over in a bit how I'm filling these out. We have the mid-year review, which is also a new sticker in the shop. Uh, because this is starting um, in July, I wanted to put my mid-year review in here. Uh, using the mid-year review will become the basis for the quarterly roadmap, also new in the shop. This is in the new roadmap section. Uh, if you go down there, there's a annual roadmap, a six month roadmap, and a quarterly roadmap to choose from. Quarterly roadmap is different than the annual or six month because we have your goal, which you're gonna figure out over here. You're going to, from, from your goal here, mind map out what the next six months looks like, so from now till December. You're gonna pick the most important goal. It's gonna go here. And then you're gonna figure out each month one way to get to your goal. Plan out your timelines and action steps, your team and tools. And then you can take that goal and fill in your goals over here. And then that can become the basis for your monthly goal setting. If that doesn't make sense, leave a comment, let me know. I left this page blank. Um, I did all of the stickers in advance because I feel like I do the stickering every time I set up a new passion planner. So by now you guys should know how I put stickers in a planner, but for in case you didn't, I'm gonna just add this one in here. This is also a new sticker to my shop. It's half of a sticker set. Uh, this is for this is the class info sticker. Uh, this one is specifically designed for students, uh, very specifically college students. And I will have a video coming out that shows you pretty much how to use this one. Um, this is based this sticker and its companion sticker that goes on this side of the page um, are based on how I used to keep track of my grades in college. And since I had a 3.7, I think I did a pretty good job of it. Um, you have the space for the days and times of your class, location, professors, name, email, office, etc. your textbooks, and then your grading matrix. Um, to go over that really quickly, um, your grading matrix will be what weight each um, type of assignment has. Like, you know, there's always attendance, 10%. And then there's, um, like midterm and final 20% each. And then the remaining 50% is made up of like a paper and homework assignments and quizzes or whatever. And so, you know, you're getting A's on your quizzes and maybe you get a B on your midterm and you know, your paper is like a B and you're like, what do I need to do to get an A? You can actually mathematically figure out ex the exact grade you need to get an A if you follow this routine. Um, and now it looks like in the video that I do for the sticker, I will show you exactly how to fill that out. There's usually a second sticker that goes in this set that actually will list out, that gives you room for all of your assignments, where they fit in this grading matrix. Like, is it a homework assignment? Is it your midterm, whatever? And then the actual grade you received and um, how you calculate it out. That's not on this sticker because I'm not actually taking a college class. I am taking a certification class. So a lot of this, like the contacts, this is going to be instead of like a class contact to pick up lecture notes from, these will be the uh, contacts of the people that I'm gonna have as my accountability buddies. 
uh, the location, date, and time are all going to be for the uh, exam that I have to take. And then my grading matrix is going to be for the assignments I have to turn in for my certification. And since they're not, they're all equally weighted, they're not this weird 10% of your grade is all of your homework assignments combined. Um, I don't have to really worry about this. In, and in fact, when I go through and set up all these pages, I'll show you how I'm going to set that up. And then finally, we have three pages of bills and expenses. Uh, July, August, September. Um, this is a sticker out of Chelsea Brown's shop. Uh, I modified it by taking off the part where it said like monthly expenses, basically make it fit into these pages better. Um, but yeah, you can go buy that from her shop. The other thing I did is added a second income bar there because I had tend to tend to uh, have more than uh, four payments each month since I have the both the sticker shop and my photography business. So eight paydays a month seems to be about right. All right. And then I've already set up my months. I have my July uh, bullet journal style cover. I have my August bullet journal style cover. And I have my September bullet journal style cover. Now, something I will point out with setting these up is that the page I used for this, which has your monthly roadmap um, and your uh, three month roadmap on it already built in is what I used to cover it up. The whatever reason, the future log comes after that. By the way, future bar stickers uh, in my shop. So you'll know these are my dates in 2021. And these are my, this is my future log. This should be for 2021. And this is things coming up in October through December. This way, if I have something coming up in the next three months, like in October that I need to record, I can record it here. If I have something coming up anytime in 2021, I can record it on these three pages. Okay. And then we'll dive right in. Now, if this was the, um, starting in October, Actually, all three quarters I start in on a 31 day. Um, if this was starting on a 30 day month, like if I was starting this in September or starting this in April, I would take this first day and make that my bullet journal cover. And then we'd have the 30 day, because each you get three sections of 30 days or 31 days in this. So it's a lot easier to just, if you have, if you have a day that starts with 31, like September, you can actually leave this space open and use this page. And then you can uh, put this on the first page and still have 30 days in the back. Okay. So that is how I have that set up. Um, the next thing I'm going to do before I uh, start putting things in my planner is I'm going to set up my tabs. So now I'm going to add my stickers to my passion planner. Um, we're going head to head Chelsea's medium sized tabs versus passion planner medium sized tabs. Now, when I uh, ordered my tabs from Chelsea for this year, I actually ordered a set to go, a custom color set to go in my passion planner that were the correct size, that is a small, so that I could do July, August, September, and have it so that I have uh, July, August, September for my bill section in the front, July, August, September for the middle section, and then space in the back that's July, August, September. Since I'm going to be doing this sticker battle head to head, I'm actually not going to put the tab, I actually put the uh, bills all clustered kind of together. So, but instead, what we're going to do is I'm going to just use the tabs for the months and the back pages, and then I'm going to leave these as just a little cluster of bill pages here because I have the second ribbon in there now, so I can just kind of basically bookmark the page that I'm on there, if that makes sense. So I'm actually going to use Chelsea's guide because this does not come with a guide to set up my planner as always. We're going to clip it in because that's for me the easiest way to set this up if I can grab a clip. As always, we're going to clip this in 
So bring it right to the edge, clip it down. I'm gonna start with, let's see, this is July. These are pretty stiff. I'll, I'll give it that. Um, I have to move this back ever so slightly to make these fit because they have a bit more base to them than Chelsea's do. You know, see what I mean? I mean, this white bit here, there's more of it on the Passion Planner ones than on Chelsea's. So these are not flush mount. I have to remind myself that because I, I prefer flush mount. But I ordered a set of each because they didn't have flush mount at the time I ordered these. Okay, so I've got July in. Go ahead to August. It's gonna bother me that they're all clustered together. I'm just gonna have to deal with it bothering me because nothing I can do about that. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, nothing I literally nothing I can do about that. Okay. See, this is the problem I was saying. If I these with these medium sized ones, I'll show you. When I they follow these and they put them so that they line up next to each other like that, they're gonna stop about here. I don't like that. Conversely, I'd have to actually measure them out to space them out appropriately. And then I want to have like a lot of blank space in between them. Like I would if I was using this in a large. I don't like that either. So just going to have to kind of show you how it looks if you space them out properly. Which is why we need multiple sizes. There's August. And September. I made a slight mistake with that. Oh well. They should all line up evenly. I have failed to put my stickers on evenly. Actually, it was the sticker, the August sticker, I failed to put on evenly. So it goes. Now, in the back, you have in the old, the 2019 one, not the 2020 style one, you have blank, 14 blank pages. I divide them up based on what month I'm going to use them for. So we've got July. I'm going to hopefully do this correctly now. These are Chelsea's tabs. I personally hate this ones that stick out. Um, like I said, when I ordered these, that was all they had. Three, four. So I'll set aside four months for July. We'll go into August. Uh, flesh mount, I like better. They're just, they're easier to place for me. Um, personal preference. Okay, so July, July, August, September, July, August. These tend to go on kind of crooked. I place them. Okay. And then I've got one, two, three, four. And then we've got September. And of course, like I said, you can get Chelsea's tabs in a four, in a four color set, just like the Passion Planner ones are in a four color set. Um, I just got the 
solid color ones because they are less expensive and I didn't want to spend a lot of money doing this experiment. So, there we go. Voila. I now have my tabs set up. As you can see, this is how they should look where they're all even across the bottom here and they almost look like they're in a row. Um, but as I said earlier, the nice thing about the Passion Planner ones, as you can see, is that they are a good bit easier to read. Okay. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is start setting up my front pages. And we can get rid of this cutting mat because we're not cutting or gluing anymore. Um, for these, these two pages are fairly uh, introspective pages where you're going to basically use these to kind of go guide your goal setting. I put these in the first because they're both at a glance pages. So I have, I can see at a glance where I should be. Um, the business one has which quarter you're in. So if you're working on a standard like business calendar, which is February, March, April, May, June, July, you'd right now be in the second quarter, but maybe you're setting it up for quarter three. Um, I'm going January through December for my quarters. Uh, if you're going for a fiscal year, this is quarter one, that kind of thing. So anyway, my quarter is quarter three. Okay, so put in which quarter I'm in. Um, and you wanna just start with where are you right now? Like where are, if you're doing the business one, where's your business right now? If you're doing the personal one, where are you in your life personally? Like what has happened? Um, what, is, what is your life? Give me a snapshot, a real quick snapshot of what your day, your life looks like right now. Um, you could also even just kind of take a picture of yourself if you wanted to for your personal goal. Uh, whatever that looks like. And in fact, for my personal goal, I'm probably going to just put a small photo of myself. Uh, I can use the sprocket or like a Fuji film and then kind of cut it in half and it'll fit in the space. If you want to do it as like a weight tracker, which is what I'm going to do for my personal goal. So, and I need to weigh myself, which I'll do tomorrow. And then you're going to assess what would have, what would be the biggest change uh, that would, what change would make the biggest impact on your life? Um, so, you know, if you're looking at personal goals and you're more looking like a mental health thing, you, you know, say what your mental health has been for the last six months. Um, and what one thing could you change that would have a huge impact on your mental health? Um, for me with my uh, health, um, I think the biggest change that would have would be eating properly. I definitely got off track eating when I had uh, COVID. So um, I'm going to say that eating the end moving more I can't spell so instead of wood we'll change which will Uh, for those of you guys that don't know, um, there's a lot of different side effects when you have COVID. And for me, one of them, it, it hit my heart the worst um, and my blood chemistry, um, which seems to be what it's doing to younger people. Uh, the 50s and older are really kind of having their lungs crap out on them. For me, it was, it hit my heart really badly. So eating healthy and moving more. And then I'm gonna put 
how they would have the biggest impact, which would help regain my heart health and balance my blood chemistry. Why do I want to do this is different than how is it going to have this big impact? This is more, why do I want to have a healthy heart? Why do I want to fix my blood chemistry? Um, looks like I can take fewer medications. So I can go on hikes without getting winded because my heart just cannot take cardio right now. And yeah, it did have some effect on my lungs. On my lungs, I have asthma, so actually it was a lot less of a problem with my lungs than I thought it would be. Like my blood oxygen was low, but I never felt like I couldn't breathe. I mostly felt like something sat on my chest, like there was an elephant on my chest. Like I constantly thought I was having a heart attack. And why do I want this? Also, so I can fit in my pre-COVID clothing. Size 12. It's one of the things they don't, this true story, I'll, I'll digress from filling this out here for a second. Um, my dad smoked until I was three, I guess. And he was like just a really tall, really skinny guy the whole time I was like super little preschool. Um, but smoked pack a day or so. And um, at some point he realized how much he was spending on cigarettes and just quit cold turkey. Uh, he's one of those people that can do that. Most people can't, he could, he just stopped. Like, I don't wanna spend, God, it was like 12 bucks a case or something, cause it was like the 80s. It's like, I don't wanna spend that much. So he just stopped. And the thing, and then he gained like 150 pounds. Then he never got off again and he ended up with diabetes and heart problems and everything and um one of the things he said to me about that whole situation was that he used to joke that quitting smoking was the worst thing he ever did for his health because he could suddenly taste things again and suddenly he realized that food tasted delicious because when he was smoking, he couldn't taste anything. So he was just eating to fuel himself. And once he had quit smoking, he was eating because it was it tasted good. And he just wanted to eat everything that tastes good. Uh, I had that exact same experience with COVID where I lost my sense of taste and smell uh, for probably about three weeks. So when I started uh, eating again and when I could taste food again, it just all tasted so so good and I couldn't still couldn't move around much at that point but I it could taste everything so oh my gosh I ballooned I ballooned uh probably 20 pounds at least no nah, I think about 20 pounds since uh COVID um so yeah that that's that's my goal pre-COVID COVID clothing and weight um so I don't have to buy new clothes so I can go on hikes and do cardio without my heart hurting and so I can take fewer medications so that's why I want to be health, eat healthy and move more to make my heart healthy and balance my blood chemistry so that I can stop taking supplements and uh, baby aspirin and so I can exercise again and so I can not have to buy all new larger clothing. Um, not that there's anything wrong with being large. I just have a size in my entire closet and now it doesn't fit and I don't want to have to go buy clothes that are larger and then lose the weight and have a wardrobe full of larger clothes that don't fit me. There's absolutely nothing wrong. If you're happy at a 14, stay happy at a 14. It is totally cool. I am, like I said, just still squeezing my fat butt into a 12 and that's just bad all around. All right. So we're going to take that and turn it into a SMART goal, your SMART goals. And I put it in really tiny fine print here in case you're filling this out and you don't have the video. Um, there are specific, measurable, actionable, relevant, and time bound. So 
they're going to be specific. You're not going to be like, I'm going to lose 20 pounds in the next three months. Yeah, good luck with that. Um, measurable, you're going to definitely say how many pounds you're going to lose. So that way you can see it. So that way in July, at the end of July, I can see if I'm on track or not. Um, actionable, there needs to be action items. You can't just say, I'm gonna lose 20 pounds. Cool, uh, you're gonna do what to lose 20 pounds? Uh, relevant, um, I'm going to watch less TV. Mm, maybe relevant, maybe not. And um, you want them to be time bound. So I'm gonna start with time bound by September 30th. I will weigh and I think we're looking at 165, yeah, 165 pounds. by following the DASH diet, I gotta do something for my heart. And we'll say walking, I gotta build back up to 10,000 steps a day. So we're gonna say walking 5,000 steps. I don't expect to completely rebuild. My heart got destroyed, or my heart and my blood chemistry got destroyed in about a month. I don't expect to fix that in three months. So my specific goal, weighing 156 pounds. My measurable goal also, 165 pounds, 56, 65 pounds. Um, actionable, following the DASH diet and walking 5,000 steps a day. Relevant, well, following a heart healthy diet. It's, uh, DASH is a low sodium, uh, uh, high fiber, low, uh, healthy, uh, high fiber, healthy fat, low sodium diet. It's going to help my heart. Walking 5,000 steps a day is going to help me build back up my cardio. And is it time bound? Oh yeah, I got a goal of when this planner is finished on September 30th. Habits to achieve my goal. These are, I would say two or three things that you're going to put on your habit tracker that you're going to track every single day to make this your goal. Um, I'm going to walk. daily and I'm going to be even more specific on that we're going to do 3k in July and 5k all right I could have done two three four and so on five by the time I'm done but I want to be averaging five thousand steps a day by the time I get to September and then we can try to up it from there. Hopefully like the gyms will be reopened so I can get on a treadmill because right now I'm just walking laps around my neighborhood. And then we're gonna try and stick to the dash, 1500 calories per day. And there's a sodium goal that I don't know off the top of my head that I'm gonna have to look at. And then I'll just put that in for now. And we'll have the macro goal. And then finally, the most important thing, I think, um, when you're doing any kind of new habit like this is what you're gonna do if you get off track. If I find myself gorging on cake every night, because it tastes really yummy, or uh, half-baked uh, from Ben & Jerry's because it's delicious, um, or getting up at one o'clock in the morning to make cookies. I've done that before. Because um, my blood chemistry is off, so I get weird cravings. Um, what are you gonna do if you get off track? If I get off track, I will add cardio. And we'll define cardio as 
short jog, a Zumba DVD, I will set calendar reminders. minutes, which is also good for concentration. It's called the Pomodoro Method. Look it up. Well, actually, I think Pomodoro is 25 and 25, but every 50, 55 minutes. Um, and then if I get really off track, rewind, rejoin Weight Watchers. Right now with uh, me being part-time employed. I can't really afford Weight Watchers, but if it's that or take three medications every morning, I, I think I'm going to, you know, join Weight Watchers. And then I've got a space over here for a photo of when I've reached my goal. Um, if yours isn't weight loss, if your goal is to learn how to paint, picture of yourself with a paint tank. Um, very simple kind of thing. And you can do the same kind of process. The worksheet is real simple to uh, basically help you achieve whatever your goal is, whether it's learning a new language or like I said, learning, um, writing your novel uh, or learning to how to paint or whatever your goal is, that's your personal goal that can go in here. Um, I'm not gonna show, do my business goals with you for the quarter because it's pretty much the same as my goal for this quarter. The difference is where my business is now, I'm gonna be putting in my, you know, gross, revenue, my net revenue, um, and then also I'll be taking from the mid-year review, which is the next page, the what worked and what didn't, the successes and challenges will go in here. What would have the biggest impact is going to be um, actually coming from probably my opportunities section here. Um, but it'll be the same thing, like what's the, after I look at where everything is, my all my numbers, what's the biggest opportunity that I have right now um, that would make the biggest change in my business. Uh, then I'm going to set a goal based on that, like, uh, I don't know, uh, sell 20 sheets of stickers a month or something like that. Um, actually, uh, 30 sheets of stickers would be my actual goal. Um, three sheets of stickers a month, let's say, and then what will this goal allow me to do? For example, like, oh, I can expand into other things. Um, it'll allow me to make up for the income I lost uh, with my day job going part-time, extremely part-time. Um, how to know if things are off track, what numbers, what metrics should I look at? Like average sale, if you're in business, is a good metric to look at, or the number of sales per month, um, or your items per sale is another good one. Uh, what will I do if things get off track? So if I notice that the numbers are going down, then I will do this. And then my habits to develop, like maybe post on social media every day, um, launch new stickers every Friday, you know, figure out what my habits are that are gonna go into that. So that's how I'm setting up my business goals and my personal goals for the next three months. Um, the monthly review is my next section. Um, I feel like I don't need to necessarily show you how to fill this out. I'll just kind of go over what I'm doing when I fill this out. Um, so review of my game changer or my main yearly goal and I will just pull out my weekly passion planner and look at my roadmap and say, okay, what have I accomplished? What have I not accomplished? Where did I think I would be by now, six months in, and where am I actually at? And that's gonna go into my review. Those are the kind of questions that you're gonna ask yourself. And I'm gonna do a blog post that will show you the kind of questions you can ask yourself for your Game Changer review. The My successes, what worked really well this year? Like for me, it went well in January and February, because those are some pretty good months. Um, June has actually not been a terrible month, so what what, what happened in those months where I was out of bed and doing things? 
biggest challenges, I probably will just write COVID right across the top here because, and you can mind map this by the way, I mean, there's lines, but I could easily just write COVID in big letters and then like my health fucked things up. And you know, everybody being out of work, meant people weren't buying stickers or doing the photography business. And my day job was impacted because we now only, we don't, in my day job is very much tied to the court system and the courts in Colorado have been shut since March. So if they're not going to court, we're not doing work. Um, and then where are my opportunities based on my challenges and successes? Um, uh, if you didn't notice, by the way, this is basically like a SWOT analysis. The only thing I uh, don't have in here is the um, the T in your SWOT analysis, but we have successes. Your challenges would be your weaknesses and then your opportunities. And then I'm not going through threats because uh, that's not really applicable to life, but you can do a SWOT analysis for your life. Um, what are your successes? What are the things that are your weaknesses? Or in my case, we put challenges. Um, where can you improve basically? What are the opportunities to improve? Where do you see um, space that you can move into? Um, in business, it's what is your competition not doing that you can do in real life? Like let's say with my um, health, what is an opportunity? Well, I'm still young enough that I can rebuild my heart health. I can fix my blood chemistry. I can say, okay, well, the gyms are closed, but I could get a mirror or I can get a Peloton or I can just subscribe to a local channel. In fact, my local gym is doing online classes for 30 bucks a month. Those are opportunities. And then what are threats in business? What is your competition doing better than you are? Um, in real life, we're gonna use health as an example. If you wanna do threats in your challenges section, you would talk about um, what is what is threatening to throw me off track? We talked about over here, how I will know if I get off track and what I'll do if I get off track, but what's gonna cause me to get off track? Well, things like, um, you know, uh, these weird blood chemistry cravings that I have are definitely a threat. Um, other threats include like my husband who doesn't gain weight ever, he could eat 10,000 calories a day and maybe gain a half an ounce and then he'll just go for a walk and lose two pounds. That's a threat because he brings home all kinds of good stuff. Um, so you go through your, that, that, that's it's the same kind of thing. Okay, so you can basically, this is gonna be like a SWOT analysis and I could actually, let me know in the comments if you would prefer me to do a SWOT analysis here next time with the four quadrants instead of a three section thing. So then I will actually move over into my mind map for the next six months. What am I going to do to get back on track to make that yearly goal that's in my yearly passion planner? I'll put my yearly goal. I'll probably actually not put my yearly goal here. I'll put the biggest goal for the next six months. that will get me to the yearly goal. And then we'll just kind of mind map it out all over the place. It doesn't have to be pretty. And from that goal, I'm going to set my SMART goal for the next six months. Setting my SMART goal is the same as we did over here for your personal goal. Make it specific, measurable, actionable, relevant, and time bound. And then my why and my reward. Why is this goal going to get me to this goal? So this goal is gonna lead me here in the next six months. Why is that important? to me. Why do I need to do this thing? Why do I want to do this thing? And then my reward. You should always reward yourself um, when you achieve goals. So what are you going to give yourself when you get to this goal? And that's your big reward. So if it's like by December 31st, I'm going to be completely independent and not even need a day job. What am I going to do when I hit that? Am I going to um, open my own photography studio or my photography and graphic design studio? Like, am I going to rent someplace? Is that my reward? Um, am I going to take a vacation if we can travel again? Uh, what is what is my reward going to be? Um, if I lose all the weight, am I going to go buy myself something like kind of fancy? Like, oh, I'm going to go to Neiman Marcus and spend a ridiculous amount of money on a dress, you know, what or a new handbag or whatever. Reward's very important. And then what I'm gonna tell you is when you go on to these next sections, put a reward for reaching your three month goal, put a reward for your monthly goal. And if you're gonna do weekly goals, put a reward for your weekly goals because that'll help you get there a lot faster. So that's how I will fill out my mid-year review. Quarterly roadmap. 
when you have your six month goal, divide it in two. If, for example, my six month goal was to get in, uh, in shape and get down to 135, 140 pounds, we would divide that and say, okay, based on where I am, I should be 160 pounds after two months or three months. So let's say that was our goal. We put 160 there. The, so step one might be if I'm 180 now, weigh 175. Step two might be weigh 170 or weigh 165 or something. Step three, maybe 160. Or step one, start eating DASH diet every day. If you're gonna break it down into chunks, you're gonna do DASH every day. Step two, month two, take a walk every day. Step three, you're gonna up it and add like 30 minutes of cardio in, whatever that is. If it's a business plan and your plan is in the next three months, I'm gonna still average uh, selling a sheet of stickers every day, 30 stickers a month. 30 stickers a month, step one, we are going to add more to the store. Step two, you know, whatever we're gonna do. And each of these steps, which should build upon each other, become your monthly goals. Um, I have this action plan here is basically gonna be the same as the action plan in the yearly, which if you see my setup video for how I set up my passion planner for the year, same basic thing. Here's my timeline. Step one, here's all the mile posts for that step. And then the action steps that will get me to those mile markers. When you get all those, step two, all the mile markers, all the actions to get to the mile markers. So if we're doing, let's say, uh, my photography business and it's five headshot clients is step is let's say the goal is to replace completely replace my day job income let's say step one is five new clients we would put five new clients here how will i get there step one i'm going to run an ad step two i'm going to uh maybe the cold call people i'm not actually gonna do that but cold call pep people step three do a you know physical mail campaign a direct mail campaign action steps well to run an ad i'm going to need the graphic design i'm going to need to write copy i'm going to need a landing page step two cold call people i'm going to need a call list i'm going to need to set some time aside um, i'm going to need to write a script i'm going to need to figure out a follow-up step three direct mail i need a mailing list i need to design the cards i need to print the mailing whatever it is i need to figure out a way to track it so that's how you fill this out. The team and tools is who will be your accountability buddy or who can you ask for help? Um, so if we're going back to this photography example, if step one is market, uh, get five new clients, um, the action steps are, you know, run a an online ad campaign. I need an ad designed. I need a copy designed. I can design the ad, but maybe I need to hire a copywriter. Maybe I need the images for the ad. All, this is all the things I'm going to need to do the action steps to make that cool. And once again, the team part is the people that I'm going to need to rely on either because of their talents that I'm going to be um, using or because I'm going to have them hold me accountable. And once again, you can use this for your personal goal. If it's the, if it's, for example, get healthy, dash diet, action steps, plan out, you know, first of all, weigh myself. The second of all, um, plan out my meals. Then I'm going to have to grocery shop. What do I need? Meal plan. I need to get the Dash Diet book. I need to um, get the healthy foods. I need to get a color coding system for like good food, mediocre food, bad food, if it's like a Noom type thing. Who's going to hold me accountable or who is going to help me? Who's going to be my walking buddy? So that's your team and tools section. Uh, we went over how the class info section is going to go. The one thing I will show you, however, is what this side is going to be for, be my learning objectives. So this is just a, the plain dot grid page that you can download from Passion Planner. And uh, I'm just going to do this as a learning objective. This will work for anything that you're trying to learn. So, you know, you can do this instead of doing the second sheet um, for my for the class info if you buy that. Um, I'm not happy with how this handwriting's coming out, but we'll deal with it. I, there we go. 
these are the new newish Coptic markers so I'm still kind of getting used to these learning and I shouldn't talk while I write because then I spell things really poorly My brush stroke writing up to par someday. So my learning objectives. This is how I'm going to the things I need to learn in order to reach my certification. Like I said, this is an alternate to if you don't if you don't have a lot of classes that you need to track. Um, for example, I don't have all of these different like weighted assignment type things. So I'm actually going to grab my whiteout. Because I didn't want to do a sticker that you couldn't actually buy in store necessarily. So I'm going to just white out the text here. And you can do the same if you buy this, if you don't want to do a custom order. And I do customize things, as you'll see in my shop, custom orders are, are something you can get it to. I'm just going to go ahead, white out what it said previously. And then I'm going to go ahead and change this to we've got the assignment here and we're going to put a due date and then completed and then because I don't have a grade I get a score and then we'll have a score so that's how that goes uh, my learning objectives Basically, I have certain things that I need to learn in order to complete the courses. So I will put that thing there. I will put the textbook chapters, for example, and then I will put in the if there's a video to watch, I can even add in the video to watch. So as I go down, I can make sure I hit all of my learning objectives so that by the time the test comes around, I will know that I'm prepared. And if the test is coming up and I'm not prepared, I can push it off for another three months or something like that until I am prepared. Uh, if that makes sense. So that's how that's how I'm going to be using that page. Now we have our bills section. And I'm just going to go ahead here and put in the months. So this is July. August I usually do in yellow, but yellow doesn't show up very well, so we'll do August in orange. And September. This is an indigo color this time around. So we'll do September.
September. So what I'll do at the beginning of each month is go in and put in my checking account starting balance, my savings account starting balance, um, put in my, update my savings goal tracker. So my goal right now is $1,000. Um, put in, you know, if, if this is like $500 in savings, I will color in up to this line here. And then I'll just color it in as I add to savings. If I can add to savings, if I get enough money to supplement what I've lost. Um, debt payoff tracker, what are the three top debts that I'm doing? And I'm doing a debt snowball method. So as I pay off a credit card, I will add how much I'm paying to the next one. Um, so these are going to be my top, my three smallest debts. Um, track the income as it comes in. The bills are for fixed expenses. So for example, and I'm going to do them in order from my yearly. So for example, rent, always do on the first. And that's usually 1625 because Colorado is real expensive to live in. And then this will be a running expense log of everything I spend. So we'll say seven one for the date and we will add in rent. And we will say that this goes to a uh, rent mortgage or living expenses or housing. And then my running total, okay? You can also, instead of the category here, you can have the actual cost and then your uh, balance if you're doing it kind of a balance sheet thing, which is how I usually do it. But I just basically pulled this out of Chelsea's store. I didn't modify, or bought this out of Chelsea's store. I didn't modify it at all. So. That's how I'll do that. When July is over, I will go over here. Hopefully the bills list will be shorter because I'll have paid off these three debts or at least one of them. So I'll put all my debt, I put all my bills in order from the 1st to the 31st. And then as they come due, I'll fill this in in my running tracker. Okay, same thing with September. So just start. This is really for people that aren't going to do it every day, but let's just fill it out anyway. Okay. And that's pretty much how I do my front pages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in the dates from my past planner um, or from any other source like my uh, phone or whatever in here, if that makes sense. Um, I'll just kind of show you briefly. I've put in my writing board underneath to make it a little firmer for when I use my ruler. I'll try to make it straight as possible. So then you just have a little line coming off here, for example. And then we're gonna just say, look, Um, if you have multiple things happening at the same day, um, you can just do a fork. So it, your line would come off like this and then it'd go up and down. So you can have multiple things on the same day planned out. And you can even add in, like I'll put in the time. Uh, you can also use your calendar over here, circle dates, highlight dates if you're gonna color code it. Uh, that sort of thing. So then, and then I'll just alternate, like all of my even numbers will go to the left. All of my odd numbers will go to the right. You don't have to do it that way. I, that's just my preference. So and you also don't have to measure it out. I just am measuring it out to make it even. And this will also be level up. And then you'll just use that calendar there. Uh, like I said, you can also highlight your dates in over here or even color code these dates here. Like if it's a day that's in red, I would know that it's a business engagement. If it's a day that's in yellow, I would know that that's a um, 
education day and that all gets based on your key over here. Then I'm going to do my goals. You can do these as either your big goal or your level 10 life goals. So if you wanted to have all 10 of your goal, level 10 life goals over here, you could. And then I like to coordinate my goals with the most important tasks. So if I have my level 10 life goals here, I'm going to put a key task for each goal over here. This is your future log. Uh, this is where you're going to transfer anything um, that's in 2020. So like January through March, April through June, or a year from now, July through August, that should be 2021 rather. And then anything coming up in the next three months um, will go here. So, for, so that way you just kind of fill in your dates. You can even color code those. Um, you don't have to use this as a future log. You could use this as a all of the dates for like 2020 if you wanted to do that. So I don't know why you would do that, but you could do all 2020 dates. You could also do all 2021 dates and not have this be 2020. This could be, you know, a year and three months from now. However, well you want to do that, but I prefer to do it as a uh, the months that are not included in this book. So 2021, this should be 2021, and this is 2020. And that way at the end of September, when I go to set up my last daily for the year, I can just transfer all of these into my calendar. And then I'll finish transferring these. I'll put any dates I already have scheduled for, for August or for September into the calendars here. And then I can keep putting them in as time goes on. The last section of my planner are the blank pages um, that I need to set up. What I, like I said, um, when I put the tabs in, I'm doing four blank pages per month. Um, and how I use these definitely varies uh, depending on what the month is. For July specifically, we're going to do a um, overdue tasks because I think as you can imagine, a lot of things that should have been done um, earlier, uh, April, May-ish, didn't get done for some reason. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this into an overdue task page. So we'll do, I'm just going to put it right here and we'll say July uh, I guess writing across the seam didn't work out as well as I thought it would there's our July overdue tasks header. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to leave some space for the name. I'm going to actually do, start backwards from 16. Each square is getting a number. I have to count backwards, which is doable, but kind of annoying. And then we'll do the same thing backwards here from 31, because there's 31 days in July. Move this over here. So this is what's known as a running task list. Um, and now that I think about it, I would have rather had the numbers just continued here and left this open. Um, 
So you know what, I'm gonna wipe that out and fix that right now. Um, I fixed it so that it's going one through 31 across the middle. Um, how this running task list works is that I will, at the end, I've already gone through my bullet journal, or bullet journal. I've already gone through my passion planner from last three months and I've bookmarked uh, notes that I've taken in here, ideas that I've had, this will all get transferred into a notebook or maybe even into the back sections here. I also bookmarked any pages that had homework assignments or, and or any pages that had tasks that did not get completed. I will go through and move all of the tasks that did not get completed onto this page here. Hopefully there's not more than 30. Then as I complete them, I will mark them off on the day that they are completed by filling in the square. If I start a task on a day, it will get a half square filled in. And then I will, so if I complete task number one on day one, I will fill in all the squares across because it's filled all the way out. If I complete task number one or task number two on day one, same thing, all the squares get completed. If I do task number three on day two, all the squares, etc., all the way down. If I finish all of these before I get to the 16th, I can start over here with these are the tasks for the 17th through whatever and do the same basic thing. But if my first task doesn't get completed until like the 26th, then I'll just color in your squares over here and I won't be able to use this side, if that makes any sense. Hopefully it does. Um, hopefully all of these tasks I will complete the first through the 16th and then all of these, I can use all this side here for tasks the 17th through the 31st. But if this task here, for example, doesn't get done till the 30th, then I just can't use this space at the bottom. Um, and then what I, I basically am gonna do with those overdue tasks is put them in here in order of priority. So that way, hopefully, this will just look like a bar that's getting smaller and smaller as I fill it up until all of my overdue tasks are complete for that month. If there's any that are not done by the end of the month, I will put an arrow through all the boxes. And then if, when you go to the July or the August tab, I will set up another two page overdue task list and start over with my most important task going all the way down. Same thing for September. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any comments, uh, things that you'd like to see changed in the stickers that I mentioned as I was going, please leave a comment. Let me know if this was helpful or if there's anything that didn't make sense. Also, please let me know so I can try to go over it in a future video. All of the products and stickers that were used today, um, all of the tools are going to be linked to in the description of this video. So check those out. And thanks again, guys. I will see you next week.